Now, Turkey has reiterated its call for the U.S. to stop arming Kurdish YPG fighters in Syria, whom Ankara views as terrorists. It follows an apparent pledge from Donald Trump to stop supplying weapons to the militia, which has played an instrumental role in driving back Islamic State. The we will not give weapons remarks from a U.S. president for the first time is important, but it will lose value if it's not implemented. It would be deceiving the world. If Washington does stop arming the Kurds, it is likely to go some way to easing the current tension between the U.S. and Turkey. That issue has been a long-term stumbling block in relations between the two NATO partners. Ankara claims the U.S. has been arming one terror group and using it to fight another. However, America seems to have its own definitions to describe the various Kurdish groups in the region, as Samira Khan explains. Kurds, the largest stateless minority in the world. The Kurdish population is in Turkey, Iraq, and Syria. And it seems for the U.S., it's more about where they are rather than who they are. Let's start with Turkey. On one side, Ankara, Washington's regional and NATO ally. On the other, Ankara's sworn enemy, the rebellious Kurdistan Workers' Party. The fight against the Daesh terrorist organization should not be led with another terror organization. We want to believe that our allies would choose to stand beside us and not on the side of terrorist organizations. Well, the choice is obvious, and the U.S. lists the PKK as a terrorist group. We support Turkey in the first fight against terror and terror groups like ISIS and the PKK. Over in Iraq, the Kurdish Peshmerga were crucial in the U.S. fight against the Islamic State. Washington put up money and provided all the weapons they needed. But with most of the fighting over, so is America's benevolence. Iraqi Kurds are losing the oil wells they fought out of terrorist control, and the reserves are now going back under government control, the U.S. obedient Baghdad. The Kurdish push for independence has also received the cold shoulder, with Secretary Tillerson stating that the referendum and its results lack legitimacy and the U.S. supports a united Iraq. The disappointment is very great. Uh, although we have a, a long negative experience with the American, the wrong signs they sent to, uh, to Abadi through their strong uh, uh, position against the referendum encouraged Abadi and the Iraqi government to come so strongly and be uh, in a position that, that they think they can uh, uh, even cancel or eliminate the status of federalism in Kurdistan. Off to neighboring Syria, where the Kurdish YPG also got everything they needed from the U.S. in their fight against ISIL. Money, weapons, training, and praise. We should be using the Kurdish. We should be arming the Kurdish. They've proven to be the best fighters. They've pr really proven to be the most loyal to us. And we should be working with them much more so than we're working. But they managed to hang on to the oil fields that they liberated with no questions from their American pals. Washington claims that it seeks a unified and sovereign Syria, but it also wants a Syria without Assad. I think that the United States will continue to support the Kurds. We heard General Mattis and uh, the Secretary of Defense say only a few days ago that the United States would remain in the northern Syria in order to give traction to the Geneva process. And uh, that means that the United States wants leverage. They want leverage against Assad, against Russia, and against Iran. And of course, the Kurdish troops that the United States has been arming now own uh, about 25 percent of Syria's territory in the north and somewhere around 50 percent of all the oil and gas in Syria. So this gives the Kurds quite a bit of leverage. Well, that's unless Turkey gets its way. Mr. Trump clearly stated that he had given clear instructions not to provide the YPG with arms and that this nonsense should have ended long ago. 